Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're talking about the edit page for acoustic and percussion agents. They both have the same interface effectively, so we're talking about the same thing. Here I have an acoustic agent kit loaded. And everything that I'm going to talk about for the next few minutes applies to three different kits actually. This is a studio kit, but the vintage kit and the rock kit have exactly the same fundamental characteristics. Some of the other kits don't, and we'll deal with those shortly. So here we've got our pretty basic drum kit. I don't need to walk you around, you know, all of the different sounds. That's obvious, and we don't, we don't need to spend any time on it. What I do want to talk about is the controls that you have over the kit and how they relate, particularly with the mixer. We'll deal with this uh, Tom sound over here, Tom C, and we'll use that as our um, test harness. So when I click the Tom C, you're hearing a sound that's actually a composite of multiple different sources. In fact, you're hearing four different kinds of sound. So the way I like to demonstrate stuff like this, where you've got multiple different influences all impacting each other and it's difficult to identify any individual one, is to strip everything back until we can only hear a single thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the room, overhead, and bleed controls all the way down. And now let's hear what the, the, the tom sounds like much different sound it's much thinner and it's more direct that's basically a virtual microphone on the tom itself every single one of these pieces of kit has its own dedicated microphone virtual microphone obviously and that's what we're hearing here there's no ambience there's nothing from the room microphones or the overheads we'll deal with all of these shortly this is just the pure sound of the tom this is getting rooted to the mixer and if we head over to the, the Tom's page, we'll see Tom C with a nice healthy signal. The second source of sound that we can get is from the room mics. Now, we don't have independent control in Groove Agent of where they're placed in the room. That's done for us. But we do have a, a, an individual control for the volume uh, of, of each sound, each piece of kit, how much of its signal gets to the room mics. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is turn the tom down on the mixer. So now we have complete silence. When I click the pad, nothing, nothing is getting through. And I'm going to turn the room mic up. So that's the sound of the tom as heard by the room microphones. In the mixer, that has its own channel strip, dedicated room channel strip, and here it is. Thirdly, we've got the overheads, and just as they say in the title, these are microphones literally suspended above the drum kit, literally virtually, and they sound like that. Finally, the most esoteric of the options, the bleed. What this represents is the amount of signal coming out of the tom and entering the snare microphone. Now, snare bleed is a thing in drum kits, so most VST manufacturers model it. In fact, other manufacturers will have different bleed between different pieces of kit. With Groove Agent, they've concentrated pretty much on the snare. So any non-snare item that's feeding bleed into the snare, it's basically toms and kick, that's what we're dealing with. So any tom and the kick drum has this bleed setting. And if I increase the bleed, we're gonna hear, so it's a really snarey sound. So the sound of the tom is going into the, uh, the snare. It's actually the lower mic of the snare. We just nip over to the mixer. Snare bottom. And you can hear that it's taking on the colour of the snare sound of the of the snare itself. So the snare is basically uh, being subjected to forced vibration, and you get in that mix of those two sounds. So when we bring all four of those features back in, the actual tom mic itself, plus the room mic, plus the overhead mic, plus not quite so much bleed, we get the full. 
rich, ambient filled quality that you would expect from an acoustic drum kit well microphoned in a professional studio. That's what they're trying to model. And the amount of control that you've got over every one of those settings is groove agent esque. So every single piece of kit has its own independent volume controls for room out overhead and bleed. If I just happen to click on a crash over here, you can see that they're feeding into the room of the overhead, but we don't have a bleed. Say so it's only the toms and the kick that feed into the uh, into the snare. Once you've mixed all of your room and overhead signals together from all of the individual pieces of kit, then you head over to your mixer and you finally have your, your channel strip, your room mic channel strip, where you've got additional control over it. While we're talking about room mics, I'm just gonna actually head over to a different kit. If I load a Simon Phillips kit, This is a good example of where each acoustic kit has its own idiosyncrasies because the Simon Phillips kit has an additional room and overhead option at the top of the drum kit where you can individually specify further settings. So here we have the kick. We can tune the kick into the room mics. So this is nothing to do with the, the, the kick drums actual tuning, which is down here. This is the tuning of the room mic itself. So you can actually um, pitch offset the sound coming out of the kick drum with the room mics uh, and mix those two things together for like, you know, phasing effects or whatever you want. Get back to our basic simple drum kit. We dealt with the four different types of sound that are up to four that the drums can generate. Now let's have a look at some of the others. We've just seen tuning. I'll just uh, set this simple pattern playing in the background, just plumb some static notes uh, into Cubase so I can talk over the top of it. So tuning is pretty obvious. Attack. Similarly, but hold and decay aren't obvious. In fact, I seriously question the value of what they've done here. Hold is about how long the sample's played for. So you you may recall when we dealt with the um, sample pages and the um, the amp envelope page, how those two things relate to each other. That you've got a fundamental sample behind the scenes that wants to play for let's say 10, 10 seconds, but then you apply an envelope over the top of that. Well, the hold button is talking about how long the sample is going to be played for. And the decay knob specifies how long the decay phase of the amp envelope behind it is going to extend for. Now we can't see, and we don't know how long these samples are or what their amplifier envelopes are. So it's a little bit misleading to pretend that we've got this much control over them. I kind of wish they'd just given me one control called decay. A good example of the kind of confusion that can arise, if you turn hold all the way up and decay all the way down, that's what your drum sounds like. Turn hold all the way down, decay all the way up. They sound really, really similar. If you've got better ears than me, maybe you can tell the difference where you can start to identify what's going on, where you do this kind of 10 to 10 past kind of thing. If we listen to this, as opposed to the other way around, what's actually going on and the way, the best way I can explain the relationship between these two knobs is that if you have more hold and less decay, you have a more severe cutoff. So the sample plays for a period of time and then is fairly brutally cut away. The other way round, where we've got a shorter sample time and a longer decay, you get more of a gentle sloping away. So that's a, that's a gentler decay than that which plays more consistently loud until the decay 
specifies that the, the envelope is going to cut away and then it seems to kind of disappear more brutally. So that's the best like functional use I can give for you to have these two knobs, but really you're just kind of messing around with both of them simultaneously trying to find the sound that, that, that you need. It's, it's not altogether ideal. Hi-hats have got a couple of quirky little features. We've got some control filters down here. I can't demonstrate the foot filter because I don't have a foot controller, but I do have my modulation wheel. So if I, um, what's that, A-sharp one. I'll just make all of these notes A-sharp ones instead and get my sequence playing. Then I've got mod wheel control here. So this is mod wheel all the way down. There's mod wheel all the way up. and you can suppress that effect from the mod wheel here. So this is a control filter where we disengage the mod wheel's influence over the hats. And now it doesn't matter what I do with the mod wheel, I'm turning it up and down and having no effect. So that's what that does. And then we, we can specify the range um, between closed and open. So that's fully open, my mod wheel is now switched to fully open. The closer we get, the less open the open is. Some drum pieces have variants within them from which you can select one. So clap is a good example. There are three different types of clap that you can select. But once you picked it, you picked it. Then so this is now doing a large clap. Sadly, this can't be automated. I'm kind of surprised by that, but it can't. Then we need to have a look at our snare drum. Here it is. You can see we've got two different types of snare drum. They just make different sounds. Pretty obvious. But we've got a different value for our bleed knob. Instead of it just being called bleed, it's called master bleed. Remember I said the toms and the kick all feed into the snare? Well, it's up to the snare how much effect that bleed has. So if I turn master bleed all the way down, it doesn't matter what setting I put on all of the other kit pieces feeding into the snare, you're not going to hear any bleed at all. Best way to demonstrate it is turn everything else away and then you'll be able to hear it. So if I take the room overhead, the room and overhead away from my toms. Take the tom away completely. So now we're only hearing bleed. Turn the snares master bleed all the way down. And now the tom is completely silent. Even though it's feeding full bleed signal into the snare, it's not getting past this knob here. Turn that all the way up. And there's the bleed back again. Kick also has two types. Head very quickly back to the Simon Phillips kit for an example of a different kind of kick effect. Because on this kit, we've also got this trigger setting. This is basically like a second um, overlaid sample sound on top. So our standard kick sounds like that. And then we have optionally a second, let's say, electro sound. And that basically, those two sounds are mixed together. This is the kind of stuff that if we were in Beat Agent, we would use layering to layer multiple samples over the top of each other. You get a kind of a very similar, uh, but more limited effect with the acoustic kits. We can choose between 24-bit samples and 16-bit samples and you can specify what the default selection is for those two things. Only go to 16 if you're struggling with your PC performance really. 24-bit takes longer to load, are bigger, you know they occupy more memory but they're superior. And in the options page you can specify what your load preference is, 24-bit or 16-bit samples. But you can override that for the for the kit you know for this for this particular session this little button here says mute instrument trigger on editor if you engage that when you select the instruments it doesn't make them sound you just get the editing features without actually hearing the kit piece 
I pretty much have that on all the time. I want to hear the drum when I click on it so that it's just a, you know, a, a quick, easy reminder of what that drum sound sounds like. Finally, you'll quite often see choke effects on the cymbals. Here we've got a crash, choke engaged, and your options are normally note off, after touch and poly pressure. So if I engage note off, it means as long as I hold this cymbal down, it's going to sound. As soon as I let go, it chokes. If you, uh, you, I don't have poly pressure on my keyboard, so I can't demonstrate that, but I can demonstrate after touch. Basically, the after touch chokes the sound if you press beyond um, MIDI value 64. So you have to give it some some grief. If I press a key and engage after touch, I've not pressed it hard enough and it's not choked. I have to press the key to get my loudness and then really go in and then it chokes it down. So it's quite a deliberate, you've got to really press it down. So that's a whistle stop tour of the uh, of the edit page. As you saw with the different kits, I only demonstrated, demonstrated a couple there, but they're all different. You just learn the idiosyncrasies for them. They're all very much based on a template and the functionality you get is really pretty obvious out of the box. Hope that's been useful for you. If it was, please consider subscribing, hit notifications, and you'll be sure not to miss the next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.